Vue.js is pretty cool, but doing the same thing over and over again, every single time I wanna set up a new project, this can be annoying. This is why I decided to create a full stack Vue.js starter kit with all these features already configured and ready to go. This starter kit already has routing built in with Vue Router, state management with Pinya, and is already configured to connect to an AppRite backend. Now to get started with this, go ahead and get the project code that's linked up in the video description and go ahead and clone it. Once you've cloned the project, change directories into the project folder and run npm install. This will download all the dependencies, including the AppRite web SDK. Now let's go ahead and run this project locally just to make sure our template is ready for configuration. And if everything went the way that it was supposed to, your project should look something like this. You did it! Congratulations! Okay, so now we wanna connect this to an AppRite backend to make this functional. First, I'll create a .env file and copy all the values over from the .env.example file. Here, we'll need the endpoint, which is already set for you, and a project ID, which we'll retrieve in the next step. So let's head on over to AppRite.io and that's where we're gonna set up our backend. Just a reminder, by the way, AppRite's cloud version is free to use. You can always get started with AppRite's generous free tier. So this isn't gonna cost you anything. In your AppRite console, you'll first need to create an organization, then a project. And once you get to your project dashboard, which should look something like this, you can go down into the settings tab and get your project ID. This is the project ID that we'll need to add into our .env file. So just go ahead and copy it and paste it over. Now, the last thing we need to do is add a platform to ensure we can use the web SDK. Most of this step is already set up for us, but the important thing to do here is to ensure you add in localhost into the hostname field. And from here, you can go ahead and click next through the rest of the steps. What this step does for us is it takes care of course configuration so we can actually make requests to our backend using the web SDK without these requests being blocked. Let's familiarize ourselves more with the AppRite console and add a user here manually under the auth tab. And as you create the user, be sure to remember the user's email and password because we're about to use this in the next step. Now that we've completed all the steps, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's make sure our server is on, open up the application, and log in using the credentials from the user you just created. And we're logged in. Okay, so let's jump back into the code now and let's review all the template code and the setup that we have so we can actually understand this and build on top of it. The AppRite.js file contains all the client configuration for our AppRite web SDK and this is how we connect to our backend. So here you can see that we initiate an AppRite client and we also initiate an account instance and this allows us to access the account services so we can do things like log in and manage our current user. And we also export this account instance so it can be used throughout our application. Inside of our store folder, you can see how we use this account instance to get our current user and this allows us to set the user state globally. Inside of our routes folder, we just have a few routes defined here and we also access our store so we can get our user and we have some protected routes here using navigation guards. Here we get our user from our store. If a page has the required auth value, we can now check the user value and decide how we wanna proceed with the following logic. So we've completed the setup and review of our starter kit, but if you wanna go deeper and actually learn how to work with an app right backend, what we're gonna do in the next step here is we're gonna set up a database and a table with some data in our app right console. And we're actually gonna query this data and we're gonna render out like a grocery list of items just to see how we can interact with AppRite a little bit more and how we can build on top of this project. Okay, so let's jump back into our AppRite console and now we're gonna set up a database. We'll call this database prod, short for production. And even though AppRite sets IDs for us automatically, let's just go ahead and create our own app ID and make this more readable. In our database, we'll also need to create a collection and this will just be for items inside of a grocery list. And let's also set the ID manually here and let's just use the same name as the collection. So we'll also need to add in an attribute. And for this, I'm just gonna set this as a string type and we're just gonna call this one body. And I'm gonna give it the character limit of 100 for now. And now that we have our attribute, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some items real quick. So let's just do milk, bread, and eggs. Okay, so we have some items in our database and the last thing I wanna do is go ahead and configure some permissions. And we need to do this before we can actually make requests to this collection. So let's go ahead and jump into settings. So under the permission section, I'm gonna select that all authenticated users can make create, read, 
update and delete requests to this collection. Moving on over to our code, we'll update the appright.js file to make sure that we have a database instance here. So let's import the databases class from appright and under the account instance, this is where we can initiate our database instance. And let's also make sure this is exported. We'll be making requests from our homepage. So let's start here and first import ref and on mounted. Import the database instance we just created in appright.js. Now let's go ahead and set some state. So we'll do loading, items to add in our items from our collection, and something to handle our error messages. Let's create a function that we can call on load to make a request to our backend. And here we can call the list documents method, and we'll want to pass in the database ID and collection ID. Once we get our response, let's update the item state with the new documents. And let's just go ahead and handle the loading state and the air state as well. Now we can call on mounted and here we can trigger our fetch data function. The last thing we'll need to do to put all of this together is go ahead and render this data out. So let's start by creating a div for a container for all these items. And let's start by rendering out our loading and air state. For our grocery list items, let's also create another empty div. And here we're just going to loop through all of the items and render out the item body. And let's go ahead and add in a checkbox field as well. The final output should look something like this. So if you see a list of items with some checkboxes, congratulations, you've completed the project. And if you watched the video up until this point, I'm assuming you enjoyed it. So be sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the AppRite YouTube channel.